How do there guys and welcome back to Edgar TV where today I'm going to be talking about some heated debates shall we say that I've had along my time on professional darts dating back to 2011. First of all disclaimer this is for you guys out there that like to get excited very quickly and bombard the comment section or blow it up into something. All these issues have been resolved. And they got resolved very quickly, as do all issues on tour. I can probably think about four incidences across my 11 years where I have seen or witnessed instances that don't get resolved within 24 hours. Either they get resolved that day or the next day. Normally, apologies, handshakes, all gets diffused very quickly. One of them I don't think actually did get resolved. It's not my place to tell you that one. What I'm going to talk to you about today is the three incidences where... I fell out with a player during or after a match. Now, when I say falling out with a player, I don't mean going back to my wrestling days where we chucked on the trunks, we got some gloves on and brawled it out. I just mean a few words was exchanged for different reasons across a variety of scenarios that happen within the games. Now, as we're looking back, I'm going to go back to the most furthest away if that's even how you word it incident that happened and this one happened for me at q school and it happened for me with a player called robbie green if you remember robbie he's a man from liverpool who surprisingly walks out till you'll never walk alone he reached a world masters final in 2009 uk open in 2006, got through to the quarter-final, quarter-finalist of the Players' Championship. So, had success on both the PDC and on the BDO side. But this happened at Q School. And what happened, when you when you look back at it, 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 you can see how it's one of those sort of heat-of-the-moment situations. But it was a semi-final at Q School. So, I think it was the last 16 overall. But as far as Q School goes, you don't have to win the whole tournament. You just have to win your section. So, this was a semi-final match. It was a race to five, and the game got to four each. At that point, I broke the throw, I believe, to go four all. I then took my darts out the board, walked straight down the hockey, and started throwing again. Now, this is a bit of a grey area for a lot of people. So, the reason being, in darts, there is an unwritten rule that you shake hands with your opponent before the match, and you shake hands after the match. However, over a long format... A lot of players, or certain players, or I'd say it's 50-50, some players would like you to shake hands again going into a deciding leg, or a knuckle touch, or something at 5-5, five, 4-4. Five, four, four. And quite often, if someone extends the hand, and I can see it, I, I will embrace. But in general, I don't embrace in that sort of scenario and in that situation. In this situation, I'm a head down, I walk straight down the hockey and start carrying on with the game. Robbie at that point wanted the embrace. I didn't see it. I won the game 5-4 and there was a discussion which got quite heated. Obviously, it's a very important match. We're going into the final to guarantee a two-year tour card and we had a miscommunicate or a misfiring at that situation. This isn't sort of the only time I've been told this has happened. I've heard back on streaming boards where I played other people where they went, oh, you missed the, the handshake at 5-5. Five five. And I, I can see why some people like to do it. Some people completely ignore it. Keep your eye out for it. See if you notice now I've pointed out that this happens. When you're watching a streaming game or a Euro tour, when it gets to that 5-5 five five moment... You'll see some players want it and some players don't. But if the head's down and you don't see it, you don't see it. That was what happened in this situation. It was quickly calmed down the very next day. And then we spent a couple of years on the tour together where everything was absolutely fine. But at that point, four or what would you have done? Would you have gone for the handshake? Second man on this list is Richie Burnett, former world champion. This happened in a pro tour in the second round at Milton Keynes. Now, I did mention in the previous video of my hardest players to play, Richie Burnett featured in that one. And if you saw that video, you may not be surprised to see him in this one. I said he's hard to play because of the, the action breaking down and the leg kicking out and all the movements, but also 
if you've watched Rich's games, he's one of these players that can get on their own back quite a bit during a match. Now, there's certain players like Adrian Lewis, Michael Smith. If they have a bad shot, they're like, ah, Mike or AD. They'll call out their own name. Um, Rich is one of these people that is the same but will berate himself quite a bit, which is, again, quite off-putting at times. And what happened in our game is... I was sort of in a situation where the game was getting quite close. It was 4-4, but I was I was finding it really hard to concentrate because he was sort of getting on his own back, but also at the same time, like I mentioned in the previous video, like the legs kicking out, and it, it's quite an uncomfortable thing to watch. So what we do on the Pro Tour is you have a a marker who's the referee for your board but also there is a marshal or players marshal for the four boards so there's 16 boards and then there are four board officials and one board official will do board one to four one will do five to nine one does ten so you you can call over the board marshal and i just said like can i have the board marshal to the marker and the marker then said right matt's requested the board marshal to watch the game because and richie didn't like the fact i called over the board marshal um as, as you wouldn't you know I, I get that um it got to 5-5 five, five. I took out 80 to win the match won it 6-5 uh, he suggested that I should start a swear jar um <laughs> it, it it was what it was the very next day he, he came over we shook hands we we smoothed it over he watches this channel hi Richie hope you're well um uh, it was just one of those sort of things in the game. We both obviously want to win that. There's now £750 around on these sort of Pro Tour matches. So very important thing. And obviously for both of us as well at the time, looking at qualification for the World Championship. So you just want to make sure that the conditions are the, the best they can be. So again, a lot of nothing caused a lot of hot air, shall we say. Last player on the list is Ted Hankey. This one happened outside of the PDC, and this happened at an event in Staffordshire. Now, this event was one I had to qualify for, and I went back to play the quarterfinals, beating Andy Hamilton. Big, big game for me, this, actually, because it ended up winning me a £1,000, which, at the time, we didn't have the house, and we didn't have a deposit, and we needed some cash, and I was going to my grandma's at the time, and we stopped in along the way, qualified for this, beautiful, great story, end up getting to the final, playing Dave Chisnell, but along the way, I played Ted Hankey in the semi-finals, and as we saw from the scoreline, I was playing very well in this game, I was 4-0 up, the crowd was getting on Ted Hankey's back, they were saying, you're going to lose 6-0, and he ended up winning a leg, I think it was 6-1 in the end, when he won his leg, he turned around, giving it the Vs and giving it everything to the crowd. I think this was more a thing against the crowd than against me because they was really getting on his back. And for me, I was loving it. Like I say, I, at the time, we'd just been moved out of our rented accommodation. They didn't want a deposit originally when we went into there. So we didn't have the deposit to be able to put down for a new property. So this was huge for me. And they paid me by cheque, which... I then had to wait a couple of weeks. I had to borrow the money to even get me to this event. Let's say it was only because I was going to my grandma's that I stopped in and played in, in the first place. But I'm, I'm sidetracking it. I'm sidetracking. Um, back to the story, man. At the end of the game, I shook Ted's hand. He walked off the stage. John McDonald was coming on to interview me, and I celebrated with the crowd. Ted waited. At the side of the stage, I did the interview with John McDonald. I've come off, and he starts the fingers going and he's swearing at me because apparently I was rubbing it in his face because I beat him. And actually, I shook his hand, I waited till he left, and then started celebrating. It's something I'm very actually proud of within how I approach things. I even did it at the World Championships when I won my first game there against Kyvenhoven. and made sure I addressed him before I then went off for the celebration. It's been drilled into me for some time. So, yeah, I took a bit of a offence to that one. Then he wanted to fight the entire crowd, and he refused. It, 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 it all kicked off, it all kicked off, which... Um, it's quite funny when you you look back at it now. But they're the three incidences for me of uh, situations that have happened. Like I said, everything got smoothed over afterwards and I think everything's fine now with the players. I don't think anyone would ever be able to make a video like this without me because, like I said, I don't think I'm that awkward or hard to play, should I say. So I don't expect too many things coming down in the comments section from foes over the years. But what do you think? 
I think the one that might be quite controversial is the opinion on the first one, the Robbie Green. Would you have shook hands or would you have not at 4-4? I honestly didn't see it anyway, so, but yeah. Let me know what you think about that, guys. If you are enjoying this content, please do hit the like button, hit the subscribe. I'll catch you soon for some more Edgar TV. Edgar TV.